Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. Can you guys see me? I hope you guys can see me. Okay. Hi. I know I'm live impromptu, an impromptu live. I always do this. I never set a schedule. I never tell people when I'm going to go live. I just, I don't know. When I feel it, I just go. I don't like making plans. <laughs> Hi, guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Yes, all, exactly. All in perfect timing. Exactly. I'm also not a good planner. I don't plan things well. <gasps> hello, hello. Oh, you guys can't hear me? Can you guys hear me? I am charging my phone. I don't have my mic plugged in. Let's see. Hi guys. Okay, good, good stuff. Awesome. Oh, how are you guys? How's your weekend? We're gonna talk about the third Babylonian gate. So I wanted to do this live. I needed to feel your energies for some reason. I tried to record it just with myself and um, the energy was there, but I needed, I needed your energies because this is a really big collective frequency, a really big shift. So I needed to go live to talk about this. Um, yeah, the energies are really rough, very rough, very intense. Um, I think we just have another planet going in retrograde. I think it was Pluto, um, if I'm not mistaken. So we have more planets in retrograde. It's crazy. <gasps> the full moon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Neptune, that's right, thank you. Yes, Neptune. Yeah, it's wild. It really is wild. It really is. Okay, so I am I wanted to do this live. I'm going to talk about the third gate. Um, I have my notes on my laptop. <laughs> So I channeled the energy, I um, compiled my information that I researched, and then I wrote it all down on a piece of paper, put it into my laptop. I wanted to print it out, but I guess we'll just have to do reading off of my, my laptop for a little bit. So we're going to talk about the third gate of the Babylonian series that we're doing. There are going to be nine videos in total. Eight of those are going to be the Babylonian gates. And then we're going to talk about the 8 day portal, which is going to be one video that surprisingly enough, I already have the channeled message on and we haven't even finished the series. Um, but this third gate is talking about the royal gate. It's the king's gate. And we have God Nana and his counterpart coming through this frequency, Goddess Ningal. So God Nana is God of the Moon, Nana meaning full moon in Sumerian text, and Sin is the crescent moon in Akkadian text. He is known as the Torch of the Night, and the sacred number in this frequency is number 30, um, which has very much to do with the number of days in the lunar cycle but because zero is obsolete we do have the number three and we're talking about the third gate so that was a really interesting synchronicity right off the bat um there is a very beautiful song that were written to his counterpart goddess ningal so i am going to talk about that um in Hi guys, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. The song is um, one of the oldest songs that were written in 1400 BC and the melodies were written on stone and 
what's so beautiful is that there's actually a guy that has um, played the song on YouTube. So he was able to interpret the melodies that were written on stone and he played it so beautifully. There was some interpretation because some of the melodies that were written on the stone weren't clear um, during the excavation of it, but he was playing it really beautifully. So I'll link it in the on my community page, I suppose, and then I'll, I'll um, link it when this video is uploaded. Um, but so, so beautiful. What a, such a beautiful song. So we're gonna focus on Goddess Ningal. She's the goddess that's coming through. She's the goddess that is opening this gate, okay? And this gate is all about magic and dreams. So it's a really powerful gate um, of stepping into your power, okay? She, so Goddess Ningal, she is the lady of dreams. She is also known as the reed goddess and the great lady of the fruitful earth. Her daughter is actually Goddess Inanna Ishtar and we did goddess Inanna Ishtar in the gate one of the series and her son is god Utu. So goddess Ningal is associated with ecology, nature, abundance, earth, water, reed, and marsh plants. She's protector of the marshes and she visits us during autumn to bless and nurture the vegetation. She is known for dream, divination, and interpretation, vision. She's linked to the moon, all senses and spheres, and introspection. It is believed that the first book of dreams, symbols, and meanings came from ancient Mesopotamia. So they actually had these dream priests that developed a method to planting and nurturing dreams and then bidding them into reality by special rituals. And I tried to find out what these rituals were, um, but unfortunately I couldn't find anything online that resonated with me. And a lot of these rituals that were documented by these dream priests in ancient Mesopotamia, they were killed. These, pri these priests were killed and so their documentation of these rituals also died with them. I'm pretty sure they burned them. So I don't know if these rituals are going to come through in these channeled messages as we channel this frequency, or if you guys are going to tap into something really magical on your journey and find out what these rituals are or create new rituals for dream interpretation. Okay, this is what this gate is talking about. So these rituals actually spread and impacted Egyptian, Hebrew, Arabic, and Greek traditions of dream interpretation. And then between 1400 and 1800, for four centuries, European and North American countries were killing those who practiced magic or witchcraft, and 80% of them were women. Some of them were men, like those priests, that developed special rituals for dream interpretation, interpretation to bid them into re to reality, but 80% of them were women that they were killing all across Europe and North America. So these are your ancestors. These are your ancestors. If this hits you right here in the heart, this is your ancestors, okay? So it was basically a female genocide and they were targeting women with property, with power, women who practice herbal, natural form of healing. They were killing midwives um, and any woman who displayed sexual independence. So they feared women with mystic and supernatural powers but this was also during the time where religion started to raise the rank of men. So in most religion, it is God who chose men, the male prophets, male disciples, male messengers, male miracle makers, and women were seen as not worthy of divine intelligence. So women were told to be submissive. Women were told to be dismissing their supernatural powers 
So they killed women with supernatural powers, yet they revered men who had them from God. How does that make sense? Like this is the patriarchy, this is the society, this is the foundation of this society, of religion. They killed women who were witches, midwives, and healers. They killed mages. They killed anybody with those kinds of powers, but yet they wrote in religious texts that men who had these gifts from God were worthy? No. No, no, no. This is why this goddess feminine power is on the rise. Okay, you guys feel this goddess feminine frequency? It's been rising for quite some time and it is rising. So the spirit of goddess Ningal right now and all of the goddesses that we have been channeling, the goddesses that you have been channeling, the goddesses that work with you, they are working through you. So their energy, their knowledge, their intuition, their work lives and survives today because it is coming to the forefront of many of us right now and it's working through you. Today, we live in a better society, so to speak. I mean, women have fought for their rights. We can honor our dreams. We can respond to our calling. We can shine bright and carry the light for others, but we have a lot of work still to be done. So Ningal in this gate, she's teaching us about dreams, earth, natural world magic, remedy, balance in the duality of faith. So dreams and visions, they live inside of each one of us where time doesn't even exist and perceptions surpass the limits of the physical and material world. Raul, I'm totally gonna block you right now because you're annoying as hell. Okay, thanks. Sorry, guys. <sighs> All right, this is exciting energy. I don't need that stuff on my page or on my life like just be respectful here we're talking about women coming in power don't come on here and ask me for a date like that's just be respectful it's so weird sorry okay so this gate is bringing in magic and dreams the unlocking the magic and dreams that is within you okay so she actually showed me a lamp and it's very symbolic of the light of who we are and this is a time of activating and using our third eye third eye is the lamp of your spirit so when she showed me the third eye my third eye turned on i saw that my whole spirit started to shine so the third eye is the lamp of your spirit. This is like the perfect time to rest under the moon, to sit under a tree, to connect with the natural world, to nurture your creativity, to journal, to work on interpreting your dreams through your own intuition. This is such a powerful gate for activating the dream world and then for working on those dreams in the dream world through your subconscious mind, bringing them into your consciousness and bidding them into reality. This is going to be a very powerful gate. Okay, very powerful energy. So tap into yourself. That's where everything is. That's where all of the answers are. It's an early, an inner, excuse me, it's an inner journey of recognition, okay? Of, of your deepest subconscious dreams and desires, okay? You're going to bring them into your consciousness awareness and then embrace them and bid them into your reality. 
she showed me, interestingly enough, she showed me a dream of me working as a psychic with police within society. And she asked me the question, she said, do you think that magic, that psychics, mystics, oracles, healers, witches, are going to be accepted in society the way that they once were? Or are you going to be still working in the shadows? Are you going to be in service, working for others in the dark? And I said, I don't know, I'm asking you, is magic going to be accepted in society? I don't know. It's interesting that she pose this question to me because there is a chance that it will. And it's interestingly enough, there is a lot of awareness out here right now. You notice how there's so many people awakening right now? So many people are in this trend, this spiritual trend. It's trending right now. Spirituality is on trend, tarot's on trend, all of this is on trend. That's all surface level. People don't know why they're attracted to that, but they're attracted to it. Let them be attracted to it. I say, let them, let this, let this be on trend because the more that it gets out in society, the, the more the better. The more the better, I say. Even though there's misinformation out there, even though they're just tapping into just surface level stuff, we can come in there and correct the misinformation and we can teach the right way and we can start to integrate the ancient ways into today. There's a beautiful um, bruja in New York. Her name is Conjure Queen. So I'll also link her YouTube channel here. She did a video about mystics, oracles, and healers um, like needing to watch a video that she did. It was a live that she did it. It was absolutely phenomenal. And she was talking about that this is your journey, that it is time for you to step into your power and that your ancestors, your guides, your spirit team, they shouldn't and they can't and they will not give you all of the answers that you seek. She said that you are going to feel more satisfied by realizing that you came to your own illumination yourself. And that's where the power and the confidence comes in. And I loved hearing that from her. So that I, I have to give that kudos to her, that shout out, because when we want answers from spirit, right? We seek those answers just give us the answers but we won't really we won't really realize the the truth of it all we won't feel that confidence if the answer comes in from someone else we won't feel that confidence of ourselves when we just get the answer for someone else so when she said that, it resonated with me because when I started to come into my spiritual journey, all I wanted was answers. Spirit, give me the answer. What does this mean? What does this mean? And they wouldn't. Spirit taught me that you feel more confident and more powerful when you, when you get that illumination yourself. And Conjure Queen, honestly, like bravo to her. She said it the best amazing and i'm tying it here because this goddess ningal in this gate is all about empowerment empowering you men and women to tap into your own magic to reach your own illumination to reach your own truth to create new rituals why do you always have to look at other people and their rituals and what they're doing do what you want to do do your own ritual create a new ritual write it down coin it stamp it you know, and teach others. You have that magic essence within you. It's dormant. Use it. Awaken it. It's the time. The time is now. This energy right now within you is rising. And it's powerful. A lot of you are descendants of 
powerful ancestors, witches, oracles, mystics, healers, midwives, you name it, mages, priests, okay, your powerful descendants of them. So what they're doing right now, they're doing spiritual transference from them to you for this for this frequency, this magic to work through you. Just because those people that murdered them, killed them, burned their intelligence, burned their paper, burned their documents, their books, their research, does not mean that it died. It's still in the consciousness. It's still in the spirit world. And it's being transferred to the descendants, to you, to work through you in this age and time. So it's time to step into power. Empower yourselves. Some of you are not descendants, okay? However, however, you are going to be blessed and chosen if you seek this, a powerful oracle, um, mystic, witch is going to bless you and start to transfer information to you, okay? Not only is there going to be spirit transference of this ancient knowledge, this wisdom, but you have this within yourself already, and that is the key. That is the key. You already have this within you. And they want to guide you to unlock it and to start to move, to change, and to create. Okay? This is a powerful gate and spirit is not playing. Spirit is not playing. Okay, yes, Eve, it's just remembering exactly. Exactly. So let's let's get into this. I'm I'm fired up. <laughs> fired up. I'm fired up. Okay. So let's see. Um this is the mystical shaman. So Yeah. I love you guys. I'm happy to be doing this live with you guys. I couldn't do it recording. I couldn't do it just me recording. I needed to feel your energies in here because we're all in this together. I love you guys. All right, we're gonna get into the mystical shaman. We're gonna ask goddess Ningal to come through. She's going to come through with some messages. All right. One more shuffle. All right, let's start to shuffle. You have here the Time Master. <laughs> That's so interesting because what did I say here? Dreams and visions live inside of each one of us in a dream state, in a dream dimension where time doesn't exist. You have here the Time Master. Our perceptions of time right now, I was talking about this to my friend and I don't know if he's on, I don't know if Patrick's on, but I was talking to him about this and I was saying that a lot of people are, are experiencing time differently. A lot of people are experiencing time differently for what it really is. So a lot of you right now, when you're in this dream state, when you're in that dream dimension, no time exists there. No time has passed. 
nothing. There's no such thing as time. It's so weird, right? Yeah, time is so weird right now. We're experiencing time for what it really is. Not linear. Not linear. So our perceptions of time is surpassing the limitations. It's surpassing the linear per perceptions that we have been per that we have been perceiving it to be here. You have here many paths, number 34. It's interesting with this, I was hearing, look at, look at this. This is, this is the dream, dream dimension. Sorry, this one, this is the dream dimension where many paths exist. And within the dream dimension, there's no time. That's what Goddess Nangal is saying. So when you're in, when you're sleeping, you're literally like hallucinating in your dreams. You're creating, you're moving, you're changing, you're hallucinating in your dreams. And you're tapping into the many paths. You're tapping into the multi dimensions of the cosmos where time doesn't exist. That's what Goddess Ningal is saying right here, right now. And what she's saying is that we are going to be taking our dreams and we're going to start to bid them into our reality. We're going to move them into reality. It's almost like you're taking one of these pathways, taking them from a dream state I take this path, I take it from the dream dimension and I bid it and I drop it into my reality. Some of you are going to see rituals of how to do this. Some of you are going to be creating rituals of how to do this. It is a, it is a form of manifestation, but it's literally like you taking a timeline and dropping it into your reality. It's so weird, but they just showed me a vending machine. They showed me someone going up to a vending machine where all these many paths exist in the dream dimension as options. And someone going up to the vending machine and someone pressing C3. And this path starts to drop out of the, of the vending machine. And you pick it up and you grab it and you bid it into your reality. That's crazy. That sounds fun. Interesting that I said C3 and it's 33. Very interesting. What else do you have, Goddess Ningal? What else do you have, Goddess Ningal? Whoa, that's too many. Too many. You have here the ancient ones. The ancient ones. Number one. And we're just talking about ancient magic. We're talking about the mystics, our ancestors, our ancient oracles. Here they are, the ancient ones. 
It's their frequency. This is the rise. This is the rise of the divine feminine goddess frequency. This is the, the rise of these mystics and oracles, mages and priests. This is their frequency. And it came out with flow and water. <laughs> These cards literally came up together. So it's interesting that I'm just floored that these came out together. This is number 61 and 20. But look at this, look at this individual here conjuring water manipulating the matter of water. Isn't that so cool? That is so interesting here. Water and flow. Goddess Ningal is talking about how we can manipulate energy, right? Goddess Ningal is talking about connecting to the natural world, connecting to earth, fire, water, air, earth, connect to the elements. Which element is you? She's telling me, which element is you? What are you being guided to? by the ancient ones, by your ancestors. You're the alchemist. Some of you can connect to all elements. Some of you have a specialty. Which one are you? This time is about you finding your strength. And work with the elements. That's what she's saying. Work with the elements flow with the elements flow with the magic flow with the magic that works through you flow with your guidance flow with your essence we're gonna get some more You have here earth. So it's so interesting that a lot of the elements are actually coming out. <laughs> and we're talking about, we're talking about that. You have your earth and water. You have here curse, the curse. I, she's telling me the curse, the curse is being lifted. The curse is being lifted from earth, meaning that the frequencies, the shifts, okay, these low vibrational, denser frequencies that are on earth, they're shifting. We're moving into age of Aquarius, we're moving into air energy, we're moving into that air frequency. So we're shifting from earth to air. A lot of these energies are on the what? They're on the rise. They're being lifted, right? We're moving from air, um, earth to air. So they're being lifted. So curses are being lifted from your ancestry lineage. Why are they being lifted? because you are coming into your own power. This is what this healing is. You're healing so that you can cleanse your ancestry lineage and so that you can cleanse the path forward of your children so that they don't have to go through what you have gone through or what your ancestors have gone through. 
because you're lifting the curse. You're the change that you have been waiting for. You're the change that your ancestors have been waiting for, that these oracles, mystics, as these ancient ones have been waiting for. Exactly, Maurice. Doing the shadow work for others. Doing the shadow work is not just for yourself. It's for others because we're one. We're all one consciousness. When you help you, you help others before you and you help others after you. This is a cleansing. And it's not just for your ancestry lineage. This is, this is like communal. This is going to affect communities, society. Imagine a lot of people right now, imagine you and me, imagine this whole soul family and soul tribe heal their ancestry lineage, lift the curse of their ancestors off and off the, your family to come. Imagine the ripple effect. Imagine the ripple effect of that. This is a distraction, the corn. I know this is like, this is cornucopia. This is about growth, but I just see a whole bunch of dense, dense frequencies. I'm just trying to figure out what's behind the cornfield. What's behind the cornfield? This is a distraction. This is what's being lifted. Look at this, the hand over the hand over the mouth. Who has been told to keep quiet this entire time? Women. Who have been told to be dismissive? Women. People who practice magic, people who practice mysticism, oracles. They killed them. They said, you can't speak of this. It's nonsense. It's evil. It's the devil. You can't speak. You can't speak. So we're going to kill you. But we'll write in religious texts that men are the miracle makers. That men are the disciples of God. That men are revered. So men can speak, but women can't. So they killed women and priests and mages for speaking on natural world magic, on healing. But they wrote in religious texts that men can, that men are the miracle makers because God anointed them with that divine knowledge. No, that's not okay. This is a time where that shit's changing. That was a distraction. That was a distraction. I don't know about you, but I'm not staying quiet anymore. I'm definitely not staying quiet anymore. And I hope you guys aren't either. This is this goddess fire that's coming through. This is this divine feminine frequency that is rising. This is the energy that is rising in all of you, I know you feel it. 
That's why your ancestor spirit is not playing anymore. It's not a time for games. This gate is serious. This is for those on this path. I was talking to a friend of mine about three years ago and I said that we're going to be witnessing something, seeing something really powerful, seeing something that is undeniable. Obviously there are going to be those people that, you know, when they don't understand things, they're going to deny it. They're going to make up some sort of reason as to why something isn't the way that it is. But I said to my friend, I said that we are going to be witnessing something in the sky. I don't know if it's going to be an angel. I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know what it is, but we're all going to be looking up. We're all going to be looking up at something, at something because it's time. We've been this on earth for too long. I said this three years ago and then recently I was talking to Russell and Russell was feeling the same thing and he said for the longest time that something's going to happen with the moon. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and then San, not long ago, she came on YouTube and did a reading about a phenomenon in the sky, a sky event. So all of these channelers are picking up on the same thing. I don't know what's going to happen, but the entire world is going to witness something miraculous, something that they cannot deny. And this is why Goddess Ningal is coming in the forefront and saying, are you, are you going to come out of the shadows? Are you going to keep quiet? Are you going to be in service to others in the dark? Or do you want to come into the light with the dark? Are you ready? Are you gonna be scared of being judged by others? Are you gonna sit there fearing, am I gonna be accepted or not? If I say I'm a mystic, if I tell them what knowledge I have, if I tell them what I learned when sitting under a tree, are people gonna think I'm crazy? Probably, but so what? Are we gonna be doing this? How long? How long? It's interesting to me, I don't know. Is magic going to be accepted like it once was in society? Maybe. Maybe. But we are going to be the ones to make it happen. We. So. Let's see. Let's keep going. This is the um, animal oracle. Yeah, we do it. It's on us. It's on us. I've I've always said that there's gonna there's going to be a day when society or when the world needs people like us. There's going to there's going to be a day. There's going to be a day when modern medicine can't cure when you know I love signs. I love modern medicine. Don't get me wrong, okay? But there's going to be a day where modern medicine can't help. There's going to be a day when witches, mystics, healers, oracles are going to be needed. I'm waiting for that day. That's what she's saying. She's like waiting for that day. And you have to be ready for that. You can't you can't get ready then. You have to be ready now. You have to be ready now. And don't do this for other people. 
do this for you because this is your calling. This is your journey. You're here to unlock the truth. You're here to speak about the truth. Do this for you. Don't do this for anyone else. I was also channeling this energy. I don't know. I don't know when, but I said that a lot of you are going to be getting many spiritual insights and downloads and you're trying to figure out how do I give this energy? How do I speak on this message? What do I say? How do I say it? Where's what outlet do I go to? Where do I say this on which platform? A lot of you might be already receiving messages from divinity from your ancestors from god and you're trying to figure out which outlet do i speak this on a lot of you are going to be sitting on some ancient knowledge some ancient truth that needs to be spoken out to the public a lot of you have already had that and you're trying to figure out what but some some of you depending on your timeline you're going to be receiving some heavy downloads real soon Because we're shifting. This is, this is a time of change, movement, and creation. Is this the new earth? Maybe. Maybe. You have here the vulture spirit. Nothing is wasted. It's number 63. Nothing is wasted. I talked, I don't know which reading I talked about this. Um, I think it was Aquarius where I saw that this vulture spirit was breaking. Yeah, Aquarius. Thanks, Patrick. Oh, hi, Patrick. <gasps> you have to watch the beginning. Um, where I was talking about this um, block of energy and it felt like a very rigidness. It felt a rigid, it felt like a very rigid energy that was very dense. It was very thick. And I saw the vulture spirit start picking out the energy, start picking out the frequency to start to scatter it for transmutation. The vulture spirit is actually one of the most powerful spirit animals, honestly. They work in conjunction with like Scorpio energy, where it's all about transmutation of, of death into rebirth. I feel like an energy is being picked at, picked to be broken apart, to be torn apart because it's too rigid. Is it the system? I don't know. Is the system too rigid? Maybe. Is the vulture spirit picking at the system, unraveling it? Unraveling it for truth to be revealed, possibly. But the vulture spirit is picking out something because it's too, there's an energy here that's too rigid. I think I was talking to you, Patrick, where I was seeing that the, um, the ice is thawing slowly. The ice is thawing. Kind of feels like that with the vulture. Energy is coming apart. The ice is coming apart. It's thawing. You can't make this up. Magic works through you. unbelievable what are we talking about this entire time like spirit spirit is just funny right now yeah that's a yeah this is scarab beetle spirit yep The 
This is the entire thing that we are channeling. What Goddess Ningal is talking about. That these priests, mages, mystics, oracles, witches, your ancestors are transferring knowledge, magic, old ancient energy. They're transferring it to you so that it can work through you. And you're unlocking your own magic because it's your journey. You're connecting with the natural world and the natural world magic is working through you. I'm telling you guys, this is the time. This is the time. All right, let's get some um, tarot and then we'll close this off. Yeah, 52 is seven, that's right. have here six of cups this is memories this is remembering look at the devil at the bottom this is like this is that patriarchy energy that are puppeteering puppeteering society that put the curse on the land on the earth that put the curse on the people told people they can't speak, told women, dismissed women. They're puppeteering the entire thing. It's their plan. The plan is changing when we start to remember who we are. This is remembering. Six of Cups. It's almost like it's not necessarily that we're taking control because this is not about control. This is this is, that's where power gets, you know, um, is misinterpreted. Power is not about control. That's what the patriarchy, this is what the system thinks. To control people, to control others of what they, what they say, what they don't say. You don't have supernatural powers. You're evil. We're just going to kill you. Power is not in control. Power is in surrender. Power is in vulnerability. Power is in freedom. Power is in love. Power is to act on love, to be of service to others. Power is your truth. And your truth, it will help others. You're gonna remember you're going to remember exactly who you are. It's interesting because I saw like the stage being reset. The stage was this for the longest time, right? The stage was this for the longest time. Now, the stage is being reset. You have here the sun. So beautiful. The sun. So Goddess Nengal is saying that this is her son, the sun god Utu. His energy is coming through. 
the sun here is about illumination, right? And what, what did Conjure Queen said? She said that there's so much power into realizing that you have come into your own illumination. This is what the sun is. The sun is truth. But you, it's like you are remembering your truth. You are seeking the truth through memories. Going back in time, what was our first card? Time master, dreams. The dream dimension exists in all of us where time doesn't exist. So you're remembering, you're remembering who you are. You're traveling into your dreams. You're learning the truth and you're coming to this illumination on your own. That's also power. Okay. Yeah, Patrick, the Time Master came out first. You have to watch the beginning. And then you have the Three of Pentacles. This is talking about seeds. We've been talking about the seed egg frequency for a really long time. This is about a new seed that's growing within you or that has always been there within you. Look at the sun watering the seed within you. The magic is working through you but there is a dormant frequency that is within all of you right now that is sprouting. And the sun is this beautiful life force right now that's watering, nurturing that seed within yourself, that magic essence that is in you, that works through you. So it's a little tiny seed. Yes, it may be dormant, but you are working through healing and lifting the dense, the curse, the frequencies that have held this seed back, that have held the magic back, that have held your true sense and your true essence back, but you're healing, you're lifting this frequency up. You're taking back your power and you're letting that seed grow. That's magic. That's magic. This is the three of pentacles and we're talking about the third gate. Yeah, and the, the frequency number is 30. Okay, which is the 30 is the number of days in the lunar cycle, okay, because we did talk about Nana, goddess, God Nana, God of the moon, and Goddess Ningal is also linked to the moon. So 30 is a powerful frequency number in this energy. Also the number three, because zero is obsolete, and this is the third gate. So a lot of you are going to be seeing 333. Three, three. It's, it's a master number. 333 three, three is also ascended masters, okay, so it's time to get on that master level. Okay, we're gonna get one more card. Boom. <laughs> Best way to end the reading. <laughs> the tower, the shifts, the movements. There's that tower. And Goddess Ningal said, this is, the, this is the gate that is all about moving, changing, and creating with, let me get the card. 
with the magic that works through you. Okay? You are moving, you are changing, and you are shifting, flowing with the elements of the natural world and the cosmos. Working with the magic that works through you. This is a time of preparation, okay? This is a time of preparation, right? What are you doing right now? You're watering that seed. You're watering that magic essence within you. You're watering it. You're preparing for the change. I'm telling you, when it comes, that it, that's not the time to get ready. The time to get ready is now. So that when the change, when the shifts really come in on a collective scale, on a worldly scale, you're going to be ready. Find your own rituals. Find what works for you. Find your elemental strengths, okay? Work with your ancestors. Tap into that ancient knowledge and start to channel what you can. Write it down. And when you're ready, speak it out to the world. A lot of you are going to get some major psychic hits, downloads, streaming information. Okay. It's going to be a really busy time, I'm telling you. All right, it's gonna be a real busy time. <laughs> All right. How do you tap into ancient knowledge? You just be an open vessel, Linda. Be an open vessel. <sighs> yeah, it's already started. It really has. It's been it's been starting for a long time. Okay, you can work with Goddess Ningal. Okay, you can invoke Goddess Ningal. She is the Lady of Dreams. All right. So if you're the type of person that receives so much dream interpretation, like you receive so much dream messages. All right. You see visions in your dreams. Okay, you can invoke her to work with her on assisting you with dream interpretation. All right, maybe you're going to be the one to unlock the special ritual from ancient Mesopotamia. I don't know. I've been trying to figure out what these special rituals are because there's no documentation of them because they were burned when they burned them, when they burned the priests. Okay, so work with Goddess Ningal, work with the dream priests, invoke their energy, all right, and just be open. You're going to see a lot of things, write them down. If you wake up in the morning and you forget your dreams, ask your ancestors, ask your spirit team, ask Ningal to help you remember your dreams when you wake up. Okay? They're going to be gifting us with a lot of information. Yeah, Ningal. N-I-N-G-A-L. 
okay? Um, what else do I want to say? I'm trying to see if she wants to say anything else at this time. Just be open. Be open. Ancient knowledge is not scary. It's scary if you think it is. It doesn't have to be scary. Why does any of this have to be scary? If, you, if you're scared of it, then you're, it's not for you. Just be open. That's all that they ask. Okay? Just be open. All right. Let's see if she wants to say anything else. Sit under the moon no matter what phase she wants to say. Okay? Sit under the moon no matter what cycle. And think of where you are. Okay, think of where you are in your awareness. Where are you in that moment in on your spiritual journey? How are you feeling? What are you thinking? Um, what are you, um, what messages have you received recently? What are you looking into? And sit under the moon, okay? No matter what cycle the moon is in, try to link where, what, where the moon is and how you're feeling and sit under the moon. It'll help you unravel and shed light on some of the questions that you have. Okay. Um, no, you don't need to talk to her. You don't need to talk to her when you're under the moon. No, you can talk to her at any time. Okay. I'm telling most people to do things they aren't called to do, careful. Then don't listen to me. I'm not telling people to do things that they don't wanna do. If they don't wanna do it, they're big boys and girls and they don't have to do it. Just get off my channel, you're annoying. Bye. I'm gonna block this person. Sorry. If I'm saying something that you guys don't want to do, I have confidence that you're not going to do it. It's really simple. I'm receiving a channeled message from an ancient goddess. If that is something that you're uncomfortable uncomfortable with, just don't do it. It's really simple. Like, you're big boys and girls. You can make your own decisions. I'm not here telling you what to do. I'm channeling, I'm channeling a message from an ancient goddess from ancient Mesopotamia. If you don't want to sit under the moon, don't sit under the moon. It's really fucking simple. Sorry. Oh my lord. All right. She's also saying, and I've said this before, create your own rituals. All right. They're going to be channeled to you. Create them. Okay? That's something that I'm going to be doing too. I'm going to make my own rituals. I'm going to create my own rituals. Okay? The ones that work for me. And who knows? It may work for other people. All right? Um, some of you might, again, some of you might receive downloads from ancient rituals that were documented and burned. Okay? So... That's going to be heavy. That's going to be a big one for some of you. I don't know how that will come in, um, but you'll see them written in stone. Okay, if you're seeing signs, if you're seeing messages or having dreams of things written in stone, then those are ancient texts and rituals that are trying to get downloaded into you, okay? She's saying that if you see that in a dream, then you're the one that's going to be channeling these frequencies. Okay. Okay. I think she's kind of shutting the veil on me. I just want to read some of your comments and connect with you guys. This is why I wanted to come out here. Mm, what a live. I'm so glad I went live.
Yeah, dreams, dreams are very interesting. Dreams are really, really important. My, um, also be careful of dreams. Um, like in a sense of there are some dreams that are fear-based. Okay. So they come from your subconscious mind because of fear. Some of you have dreams where you're, some of you have nightmares. Okay. Be careful. Cause sometimes nightmares are psychic attacks. Okay, like I was psychically attacked by someone and I knew who it was. It was a person that commented really rude on my channel. I knew who they were. They were trying to fight me on YouTube, on a channel, on a comment page. And um, they psychically attacked me and I had a, um, I had nightmares, like really bad nightmares. But spirit took that away really quickly. All right, so always be aware of why you're dreaming things, what you're dreaming about, nightmares. Um, sometimes they're fear-based, sometimes they're psychic attacks. Okay. So always ask for protection. Let me, let me see if you guys have any questions before we close off. Can bad dreams release past life karma? No. No. Who can who can we call on to help interpret the daytime downloads? That's interesting. That's an interesting, Ariel. I rarely get daytime downloads. I mostly get nighttime downloads. I don't know why um just on your on your spirit team your angels your guides your spirit team your higher self you're, they're always with you day or night okay the goddess name is ningal n i n g a l you had a vision from Mesopotamia, blue and gold box with stars and moons all over it. I'm still trying to figure out what's inside or what, what it represents. That's beautiful. You made a picture of it? That's interesting. You put, you put celestite under your pillow, Eve. I put, um, I put selenite. I put selenite under my pillow. Do twin flames exist? I'm not gonna talk about twin flames here. Sorry. But to answer your question, yes, but like a very small number of them exist. Like not many. Any other questions before we go? How long have I been working with Goddess Ningal? Um, for a few weeks now. I think it's been about two weeks. Yeah, it's been two weeks. All right, my loves. I wanna keep this live not too long. A lot comes a lot comes from ancient Mesopotamia, especially dream interpretation and divination. Okay. Yep, you can ask Goddess Ningal to help you interpret your dreams, but her message in this reading was about empowerment. So she wants you to empower yourself to interpret your dreams through your own intuition. Okay. Okay. I'm glad, Ariel. Well, you, I hope you guys can rewatch this. It's not that long. Thank you guys. I love you guys so very much. I hope that this was helpful. Um, okay, I hope that this was helpful, honestly. 
this was a really big energy and uh, I really appreciate you guys being here with me. I love you. Until next time, we're going to do the fourth one soon. Bye, everyone.